You okay now? It's Tim G5TM back for another one. So the doublet. Dipole fed in the middle with ladder line gives you lots of multiband use. So I've done a couple of videos on doublets. I'll put a link up there to uh, to one of them up there somewhere or over there somewhere. It'll be up there in a minute. So um, the doublet, a really good option for running a multiband antenna. Now, the thing is, lots of people say you need the antenna or the dipole, in this case it's a dipole, of course, really, to be um, at least a half wavelength long on the lowest frequency of use. Well, I would say it isn't the case. In fact, I've used 44 foot long dipoles as doublets for 40 meters, which is uh, pretty short. It's about one third of a wavelength and somewhere in between that as well. And currently I've got a, a coax fed half wavelength dipole up. It works really well for what it wants to do. But um, let's see how short we can go with a doublet. Let's look at 40 meters in a small garden and see how short we can go, how short we can make our doublet before efficiency becomes a bit of a problem. So let's have a look. So I've uh, done a bit of uh, research into this, as you can probably tell. Now, uh, what I'm going to show you here is basically, this is what the dipole looks like. It's an inverted V fed in the middle, and uh, it's basically tuned to be on around 7.15 megahertz. Uh, the, the tuning isn't too critical, really. Uh, it's fed with um, 450 ohm ladder line. I'm using, in this case, I'm modeling about 50 foot of it. That's about 15 meters of it, if you're looking at metric. The height of the dipole in the center is about 7.7 .7 meters above the ground, about 24 feet. And depending on how short it is, at the shortest length we will be looking at, the uh, the ends of the uh, the ends of the inverted V are about 4.8 meters above the ground. That's about 15 feet or so. And at its longest length, which will be a full half wavelength, okay, uh, there'll be about 2.3 meters above the ground, which is about what eight meters, eight eight feet, something like that. So what I've got and done is reduce the length of the doublet from its usual half wavelength down to about a quarter of a wavelength. And we've looked at both the radiation pattern and also, critically in this case, the feed line loss. Now, if we look at the radiation pattern, at the bottom on that table there, you can see different colours. The top one, if I just go on my mouse here, this is the half wavelength uh, length dipole, if you like, the doublet. And you can see it's a reasonable tune. I could adjust it further, but 1.8 to 1 is okay, 1.79 to 1. And then down here, we've got it reduced further. So we've got it reduced by um, about 10%. So that's 18 meter long uh, dipole for 40 meters. This is a 16 meter long one, 14, 12, and 10. So we're going from 66 feet to about 60 feet, 53 feet. Uh, what's that? About 46 feet. Uh, that's about 43 feet, and that's about 33 feet, something like that, okay? You can work out the imperial to that, but uh, there we go. So we're taking it down in steps. Now, what you can notice in this table, if you look closely again here, look, is the SWR really does, at, this is at the feed point, don't forget this SWR, okay, at the actual feed point itself. So the SWR climbs markedly, and also, if we look here at the reactants, when we shorten the antenna, we introduce reactors. And look at how the reactance really begins to increase and the resistance drops as well. So this gives us a clue about what might be happening. Funnily enough, of course, the gain itself, and the gain we're looking at 90 degrees. So we're looking straight up as a cloud warm, which is what this antenna would probably be anyway, because it's not very high off the ground compared to the wavelength. Um, the gain basically doesn't change. It, you know, 6.42 to 6.36 dBi. So that's, that's, that's nothing. Okay, so that's that's an interesting thing. So let's um, let's come out of there for a second and let me show you what I've been doing with this. Oops, that's the wrong thing. But that's the right thing. Uh -huh. Right, so let's have a look. So at its full half wavelength long, 20 meters long, what I've gone and done is go into a program called Transmission Line Details. And I, what I'll do, Transmission Line, what I'll do, I will do a little video on that some, someday. It's a really useful thing, really useful little program. Now, because I've been using MMANE, I can get precise um, R and X figures at the feed points. So, for example, this is this is the full normal half wavelength length for 20, for 40 meters, 20 meters long, hence the 20 on the right-hand side here. And let me actually put this into, um, yeah, there we are, there for you. So we've got 43 ohms and 26 ohms at the feed point for R and X. We're feeding it with 50 feet of, uh, 15 meters worth of 551 ladder line kind of the standard single strand stuff you get by 18 gauge normal stuff you buy from the shop really um you can see down here look the swr is 1.79 and this program's telling us all things considered we've got total loss of just under half a db so out of our 100 watts what we're squirting up here we're, we're managing to radiate initially about 89 watts so 
fine. I mean, this is a typical sort of setup. No problem. No, we're not going to lose any sleep over half a dB. All right. Whoops. Now, let's go to, yeah, there we are. So we've reduced it down to 18 meters now, okay? So this antenna is now 60 feet long, a bit shorter. Notice the reactants are starting to build a little bit here, okay? And the SWR is, is, is higher at 14 to 1 at the feed point, but don't forget, ladder line's quite forgiving, so we're only losing about 0.8 of a dB altogether. Nothing to worry about. doesn't make any difference. So by reducing it by 10%, we're, we're, we're creating no real real world difference to a half wavelength let's knock it down a bit further let's go to say yeah let's, let's go down to a three-eighths wavelength so we're knocking it down now from 18 meters long which is about 60 feet to about 15 meters long which is about 50 feet now this is about the length near as damn it of a half size g5rv now bearing in mind with half size g5rvs they are fed with a matching line of of 450 or 300 ohm ladder line and then you've got to run a coax back to your shack this is actually supposing here on this model we're showing now that we're running a full length of 450 ohm all the way to a balanced tuner so actually the figures we've got here would be slightly better i would say than a half size g5 and if we look at it reactance has gone up to nearly 400 ohms and we've now got 2.4 db loss so effectively our swr at the feed point is 173 to 1 2.4 to 1 we're now squirting about 57 of our 100 watts out so basically we're losing nearly half our power and that's where the half size g5 rv now Again, this is down to the individual use case. You might consider 2 dB or 3 dB to be acceptable. You do what you can do anyway, all right? But, you know, again, we'd make plenty of contacts with this, with inter-G propagation in the UK, a few hundred mile contacts, short skip stuff, shouldn't be a problem, all right? Um, but, you know, we are losing a little bit. Now, if we go further, let's put this down to, say, ooh, let's knock it down to 70% of a half weight. So this is going to be about 46 feet long. Again, we're increasing the reactants. We're now losing 3.2 dB. We're now losing just over half our power. And our SWR at the feed point is 304 to 1. This is all to forget being fed with 50 feet. That's 15 meters of 450 ohm. Let's go further. Let's knock it down to 60% of a half wave. We've now got this down to about 40 feet long. That's about right, isn't it? Yeah, it's about 40 feet long, which is, what, 12 meters long. Again, reactance has crept up. Look, as you can see here. Make this a bit bigger. Here, look. SWR at the feed point, astronomical. 50 ohms anyway. And our 450 ohm ladder line is, is, is gallantly trying to help, uh, help us through this, but we're now losing about 5.5 dB, which is nearly three quarters of our power. So we're beginning to struggle. And what you'll also find as well, if you look at this figure here, this Z figure here, nearly 5,000 ohms. So at the end of that ladder line, your tuner's having to cope with about 5,000 ohms, which some tuners can. An awful lot of auto tuners will not. You may have to use maybe a four to one rather than a one to one current balance, which would be interesting. Finally, let's go nuts. We've got a 20 meter, a dipole cut for 20 meters, which is 10 meters long. It's a quarter wave on 40. And we're going to ask our system to try and tune the nuts off this with using 450 ohm ladder line. And we're going to try and use this antenna on 40 meters. And you probably can do it if you've got the right, if you've got a wide range tuner. Um, reactance is nearly 1,000 ohms. SWR at the feed point for 50 ohms is off the scale and we're losing about 8.5 dB and we're putting out about 14 out of our initial 100 watts. So clearly it all depends on what your limitations are. If you've only got the real estate for maybe a 40 or 45 foot long dipole uh, and you're trying to force it onto 40 meters it'll probably work and but you'd be prepared to lose half or more of your power all right you, you'll have a lot of loss even with 450 ohm which is initially forgiving imagine trying to tune this bit away with coax you won't you won't begin to understand what the or you won't begin to worry about what the what the uh, the losses are then it's astronomical i for me personally it's all it's all let me go back to full screen uh, for me personally what would be the um what would be my my sort of deal breaker i wouldn't personally want to go any sort of lower than um or any shorter, I should say, than a 3 8 wave. So, you know, I would say I wouldn't want to be losing more than 2.5 dB if I could help it. That's just me. And if I have if I have the space to fit in 50 feet, 15 metres worth of, of a dipole, and uh, fade with ladder line and get to work on 40 metres, then I would. And, of course, you can extrapolate these figures up and down as well. 
So for 20 meters, you can say, well, a seven and a half meter long dipole, maybe 20, 20, or well, that'd be 25 feet. For 80 meters, 100 foot. Now I've used a 94 foot uh, di uh, doublet on, on 80 meters, which is somewhere under 14 meter version on this for, for 40 meters. It's done all right. So, hey, there we are. It all depends what you can do. If you've got a small garden, you try and do what you can do to get onto the lowest band that you want. But it's just to show that uh, we are, even with ladder line, you've got a fair bit of loss with these smaller lengths of dipoles. Thanks for watching anyway. Hope it's given you some food for thought. Let me know in the comments what you've done to get onto your lowest band at home, especially if you've got a small garden like me. And let me know how you've got on. Uh, there'll be another video coming up over there somewhere up there around there and you can subscribe by clicking over there there we are get my i've got my my hands mixed up today seven three take care we'll catch you for another one Bye bye